At the 1980 Boston Marathon, Rosie Ruiz set a new women's record. This unknown runner came out of nowhere ahead of all the other women. Rosie Ruiz, the women's winner in the Boston Marathon today with a time of 2.31 and change. Ruiz ran so fast that many competitors did not recall seeing her pass them during the race. And that's because she never did. The mystery woman winner. Denied that she cheated. I had one minute to feel that I had won the race. It's not fair. This is a story about how a controversial runner stole the spotlight and took her secrets to the grave. The Boston Marathon is the oldest marathon in the world. Beginning in 1897, this race attracts runners from all over the globe. For decades, those runners were only men, as women were barred from competing. Bobby Gibb tried to change that. She applied to compete in 1966 and promptly received a letter from marathon race director Will Cloney that said women were physiologically unable to compete in marathons and that his race did not want to take on the liability of having women participants. Gibb was not deterred and ran the race as an unofficial participant, beating two thirds of the field with a time of three hours and 21 minutes. Gibb would continue to run the marathon without an official racing bib for the next five years. The following year, Catherine Switzer sent out to compete in Boston. She entered her name as Kay Switzer and did not disclose her gender. She paid the entry fee and had a male friend pick up her running bib. When the race began, Switzer made history, becoming the first official female marathon participant. Two miles into the race, press and race officials got wind of Switzer's run, and Jock Semple, the co-race director, ran out and tried to stop her run. Media snapped images of Semple grabbing Switzer before her boyfriend, at the time, Tom Miller, pushed him off. Switzer would go on and finish the race. After the race, director Cloney said, women can't run the marathon because the rules forbid it. Unless we have rules, society will be in chaos. Images of Switzer getting attacked were seen globally. In response, marathon officials created stricter rules to prevent female entries. Pressure eventually forced them to change their stance. And by 1972, eight women officially entered the race. Switzer herself came in second in 1975 before turning to a career in broadcasting. In 1980, she was on the marathon route in Boston working for ABC Sports, watching Canadian Jacqueline Garreau lead a field of over 400 women. Switzer followed Garreau throughout the race, documenting the leader's path to gold. With two miles to go, she went to the finish line to wait for her. There, she saw the unthinkable. A woman in a baggy yellow t-shirt, exhausted yet barely sweating, crossing the finish line four minutes ahead of Garreau. Her name was Rosie Ruiz. It was stunning. How had she beaten Garreau by over four minutes? And more importantly, how had Switzer missed her on the broadcast? Marathon officials placed the gold medal around Ruiz's neck and the famous laurel wreath along her hair, which was surprisingly styled and well-kept for someone who had just run over 26 miles. Now, Switzer was tasked with interviewing this mystery woman. The women's winner, she's getting a case of the sneezes. Rosie, Rosie Ruiz? and the broadcaster was immediately skeptical. Have you been doing a lot of heavy intervals? Um, someone else asked me that, and I'm not sure what intervals are. <laughs> what are they? Well, intervals are, are track workouts that are designed to make your speed improve dramatically, and if you went from a 256 to a 231, one would normally expect that you'd do a lot of speed work. Is, is someone coaching you or advising you? Uh, no, I advise myself. <laughs> Ruiz seemed totally confused. And to make things weirder, she just kept sneezing. And that's not a vital detail, but it's honestly impossible to separate from this story. Rosie! I don't know. Uh. As Garreau, who appeared to lead the entire race, approached the finish line, somebody in the crowd shouted out that she was in second place. She had no idea what they were talking about. But sure enough, as she darted to the finish line, the medal waiting for her was silver. Was this sneezing stranger really the women's champion? Rosie, there are those that say that your improvement in time is impossible. Now, uh, Bill, have you heard before From the New York of... Marathon, right? Yes, saying? the improvement from the first marathon you ran, right. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. At the New York City Marathon, Ruiz finished in just under three hours. 
She had just won Boston, a more grueling race much faster. The well-deserved skepticism garnered national media attention. Rosie Ruiz today denied that she cheated to become the women's winner in Monday's Boston Marathon. I doubt that she can do one mile at the speed she did the Boston Marathon. I don't know. I think Rosie will have to resolve this for herself, you know. Before we get to that, quick reminder, this video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, as you can see in the sign back there. They have the best games in sports, uh, so be sure to download the app. Use promo code ORIGINALS. You'll get a great deal on us. It's linked in the description below, so check it out when you get the chance. Anyway, back to the story. Cloney had a new scandal on his hands. A lawyer by trade? He didn't really immediately take action on this one. Instead, he wanted a thorough investigation to be completed before determining a ruling on whether or not Ruiz would remain the winner. The Boston Marathon at the time did not have proper means to track their runners. When checkpoint officials said they didn't recall seeing Ruiz, Ruiz responded by saying they must have just missed her or confused her with a male runner. So officials turned to the media coverage to try and find this mystery woman. Catherine Switzer, along with other officials, reviewed hours and hours of video the next day and Ruiz was not seen anywhere before the final mile. But Cloney still did not act, and by delaying, the story only grew bigger. I could take a polygraph test, but I don't think that it would measure uh, anything concrete. Three days after the Boston Marathon, Ruiz held a press conference. There, she was joined by Steve Merrick, the president of the running club she was a member of. At this press conference, Merrick defended Ruiz saying he had seen her at the starting line and that she was a good enough runner to run at the pace she had. Merrick himself was a marathoner. He was known for running with a Superman costume on, and he himself had been accused of cheating in the 1978 and 1979 New York City Marathon. Two more people came forward also saying they had seen Ruiz run. I just saw someone stumble out of the crowd uh, in front of me across the street. I thought someone had just sort of stumbled into the race. Maybe. They thought Ruiz was pulling a prank and were stunned to see it in the newspaper the next day that she had been declared the winner. As the indictments against Ruiz grew, one thing was still not certain. Why would she feel the need to cheat if she had performed so well in New York? Susan Morrow was a freelance photographer. On the day of the 1979 New York City Marathon, she was riding on the subway towards Central Park to catch the runners finishing the race. She noticed a woman on the train. The woman had said she was in the marathon, but hurt her ankle at the 10 mile mark and had to stop. She, like Morrow, wanted to see the finish line. The runner introduced herself, saying her name was Rosie Ruiz. Once they arrived, the two walked together. Each time police or race officials saw the two, Ruiz would lean on Morrow to show that she could barely walk. They soon arrived 50 feet from the finish line, where Ruiz suddenly declared to volunteers that she was an injured runner. Volunteers stepped in and walked Ruiz to the medical tent right past the finish line. As medical officials worked on Ruiz's ankle, they gave her an estimated finish time of 2 hours, 56 minutes, and 29 seconds. They did this because they thought she had been hurt near the finish line running. They didn't know that she had rode the subway for over half of the race. Susan Morrow watched the 1980 Boston Marathon on TV. When she saw Rosie come in first, she immediately felt uneasy. Her friend told her to speak to the New York Times, and when Ruiz gave her press conference with Steve Merrick, Morrow was in the crowd watching. The next day, after a quick investigation, New York City Marathon officials disqualified Ruiz, which would automatically disqualify her from the Boston Marathon as well. In their investigation, they learned that Ruiz had not only cheated during the race, but she had lied to get into the race from the start. Ruiz submitted an application after the runner's deadline for New York and was not allowed to participate. After some back and forth, Ruiz was granted a special dispensation to run. And this was only because she told marathon officials that she was dying of brain cancer. This, predictably, was a lie. Back in Boston, Will Cloney still had not publicly disqualified Ruiz. Superman Steve Merrick, Ruiz's only ally, soon turned against her, announcing that he was unsure she had run the marathon after all. Cloney was left with no other choice. Eight days after Ruiz shocked the world, Cloney announced that she had been disqualified from the Boston Marathon and Jacqueline Garreau was the official winner. Jacqueline Garreau was flown back to Boston, where they recreated the marathon finish. 
Garo, dressed in jeans and a pullover, crossed the tape, becoming the first and only Canadian woman to win the Boston Marathon. The next year, Garo was in Miami for a 10K, where she was approached by none other than Rosie Ruiz herself. Garo asked why Ruiz did what she did in Boston, and Ruiz declared that she had won the marathon, and that she would soon run the Boston Marathon a second time. That, as you would expect, was a lie. Ruiz never ran the Boston Marathon again. In 1982, she was arrested in New York for embezzling $60,000 from the company she worked at. That very same day, runners gathered in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. The 85th Boston Marathon had begun as Ruiz sat in the back of a police cruiser. You can't argue with that timing. There are still questions today about what motivated Ruiz to cheat. Steve Merrick had said that Ruiz confided in him that she did not run the full marathon and that her goal was not to win, but instead just finish. Ultimately, she mistimed where the women competitors were and jumped into the race too early. Now, Ruiz never publicly came out and said that she cheated. When asked in a rare interview, she defended herself, saying she had won. She never returned her gold medal. Ruiz passed away in 2019. Her obituary made no mention of what happened on that fateful day in Boston in 1980. If they take my title away from me, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you want more from us, subscribe to our newsletter linked in the description below.